Hello, welcome to Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. I'm Paul DeBartolomeo. In this scenario, we have a rolled over vehicle with a partial ejection and an extremity pin. This is becoming more common with the advent of side curtain airbags. The airbags are designed to prevent a person from being ejected from the vehicle. However, on many occasions, a person's arm or leg will come out of the vehicle and get pinned under the A-post as we have here. In doing our size up, we have to notice that we have an extremity pin and have to lift the vehicle prior to performing the extrication. So in this scenario, we're going to discuss options for lifting this vehicle to free the extremity pin and then get into our extrication operation. In order to free the extremity pin, we're going to lift the vehicle from the rear. However, we need to stabilize the front of the car first so it doesn't slide when we lift. We have a few options in stabilizing the front of this vehicle. Traditionally, we would place step chocks or wedges right under the front bumper to keep the car from sliding. However, a lot of modern cars have these plastic bumpers which don't really have a lot of meat to grab on. Something we could do is drive pickets down through the hood and into the ground to stabilize this car from sliding forward. The firefighter is going to come in now and drive the pickets in to stabilize the front of the car. So we've got two pickets driven down through the hood into the ground to stabilize the front of the vehicle. If we were on an asphalt road, we could drive the pickets down through the asphalt as well. Now that the front of the vehicle is stable, as we lift the rear, there will be no forward motion. We're going to work our way back to the rear of the car and set up our chain for lifting. In order to lift the car, we're going to create a chain cradle. The guys are going to come in with a rated chain and wrap the underside of the car. They're going to work the chain up as far forward as they can so the chain doesn't slip off the back side and they're going to work to get all the slack out of the chain so we get maximum lift out of our rescue jack. They'll attach the chain up on the underside of the vehicle. And now our chain is set. We can come in with our lifting equipment, set that into the chain, and we'll prepare to lift this car. All right, so what we're set up to do now is get our rescue jacks into position and get them connected to the chain. We want to ensure that we have a proper angle with the jacks. So if we treat this as if we were sizing up a ground ladder, I'm just going to reach out and try to cut, touch the car as if I was trying to find a good climbing angle for a ladder, and that's a pretty good spot to put my base plate for the rescue jack. So Russ and Mark are going to come in, and they're going to set their jacks in place. Once the jacks are set on the chain, we can use a wedge to take up any additional slack. We want to try to get as much of the slack out of the chain as possible so we can maximize the lifting capability of our rescue jack. So as we can see, there's still a little bit of slack in the chain underneath the roof. So what Tony's going to do is come in with some 4x4s and try to take up that slack. It's important to try to get as much of the slack out of the chain as we can so we maximize the lifting potential of the rescue jacks. Once the blocks are set, Tony's going to take a step back and we're going to take an overall view of the bases of our rescue jacks just to make sure they're in proper alignment. Yeah guys, bases look good. So now we've got the rescue jacks in proper alignment. The next thing we're going to do is come in and connect the base straps and draw the bases in. So we're going to attach the ratchet strap and Russ is going to tension the ratchet. We want to do that so as we lift, the bases don't kick out of our rescue jacks. Once the strap is tensioned, we're in a position to lift this vehicle. All right, the last step we're going to perform before we lift this vehicle is to secure the chain to the car. What could possibly happen as we lift is the chain slide off the back of the car. So what we're going to do is come in with an additional ratchet strap, hook it on the chain, pass it around the wheels to the other side, hook that on the chain, and secure the chain back.
All right, so we've tensioned the chain back to prevent it from sliding off the back end of the car. Now we're in a position to perform our lift. All right, so we're going to begin lifting this car using the chain cradle. We've got our firefighters set up on their jacks. Tony's going to coordinate the lift. What's nice about these jacks is that we can alternate sides to level the load. As we can see, this side is a little dipped down. So Russell can bring his jack up to level the load, and then we can come up in unison. So Tony's going to go ahead and coordinate this lift now. Okay, Mark. Hold. Russ. Continue. Keep going. Keep going. One more hole. See if we can get the pin. Nope. Bottom. Bottom. Okay. So you hold. Mark. Good. So once we've achieved our desired height, we're going to pin the column to secure the jack. The jacks are rated, the columns are rated for 10,000 pound working load limit. So we have more than enough stability here to keep this load up. We'll go around and see if we have clearance to remove the pinned limbs. Limbs that are pinned are free. Okay, as you can see, we've achieved the height necessary to free the trap limbs. At this point, further extrication would be necessary to totally free the victim. But as far as the lift goes, we've done exactly what we needed to do. In this scenario, we were faced with a partial ejection and an extremity pin. We used a chain cradle in conjunction with the rescue jacks to lift the vehicle to free the pinned extremities. I'm Paul DeBartolomeo. I'd like to thank the Connecticut Fire Academy, the Commission of Fire Prevention and Control for allowing us to use their equipment and their facilities, and I'd like to thank you for watching Fire Engineering's Training Minutes.